Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's uh, Wednesday, beautiful day today. Had to mow the lawn, get rid of some of the leaves. You know, they're starting to come down, but they're still up there and they're still green. So it's gonna be a while before they all come down. A lot of times they all come down at once as uh, Dave, old Sneelock, uh, he's experiencing. They're all coming down at once over there, but not yet here. Anyway, we gotta go shopping. We got a few things to do, and then let's get down the shop and do okay, stuff. Okay, we are down the shop, and uh, I have to tell you, it gets dark early now. 6.45 already, it's getting dark, and pretty soon the clocks will be going uh, fall back. They'll be going back, which makes it even worse. You know, then it gets dark at like 5.30, you know? But, uh, you know, it's only for a few months, so that's what we do. We deal with it. Um, first off, I still have not, reading through the comments, I haven't got a definitive answer of what this tool is. And you know something? Uh, you know, I I've seen a couple people say fish boners and uh, or deboners maybe or whatever. And I don't, I have no idea what, uh, if that is actually it because of the ones that I've looked up. Uh, they all look different. They all look smaller. You like for taking out smaller, and this thing is just, it's very unusual. So put your thinking caps on, or if you see anybody, and I know F. Dick, the uh, owner, the maker of this tool, was known for their butchery tools and things like that, but yeah, I don't know. I've never seen, and looking through all their old catalogs, I haven't seen anything that looks like a scissor. They're mostly knives and sharpeners. So still trying to figure out what that is. So let's see what we got we went to elephant's trunk let's see what we this picked is everything up. i picked up at the uh at the uh, boot sale as they say overseas uh, we call a flea market here and uh picked up a nice abus lock uh, i always like these abus uh, especially when you have two factory keys with it uh pick this up and before I... <laughs> do you know what this is you see what it says here electrolyte number 18. can you see that you see what it is see what the edge looks like that is a tire spoon that looks like a fun restoration. Uh, picked up a nice ball peen hammer with an extremely long handle for my challenge, the uh, the short handle challenge. I might be doing that today. We're going to see. Uh, I, you know something? I always like these. I have a bunch of these Heller Brothers. And the reason I like these, look, nobody uses these anymore, these wrenches, right? But what it is is if you're looking for any kind of start your collection or things like that, Basically, a good thing to look for is tools that have some kind of uh, embellishment as far as the way their name is written. And, and look at the font on here. I always thought the font was crazy because you see it says Master Wrench, missing a W, but, you know, Master Wrench. And you could see how it kind of, you know, it's not perfectly straight. And that's what gives this kind of tool a little bit of character. It's chrome vanadium. And, uh, you know, it's got the little... Uh, I guess the uh, box end wrench on this end. But uh, anyway, I have a bunch of these and, you know, they have th different ones. But this is a kind of an early one because you could see how the uh, the writing was. So I always thought that was cool, you know. So that's why I picked that up. Again, these were all 2 or $3 each. So uh, picked up a Forster Brothers, right? Is that Forster Brothers uh, knife? The Tetanus Special. That we like to do here. We like to uh, challenge ourselves if we can. But this one looks like it'll get. It, it's not super thick. But it looks like a, a decent uh, knife to have. A plant. As we call them here in the city. <laughs> uh, okay. Here's another number. Wizard number nine. This one. The jaws are in really nice shape. Uh, unfortunately it's got some stamped initials in here. But uh Otherwise, you know how I like these and uh, it does look like it's got a little bow to it this way, doesn't it? Doesn't it look like there's a little bend to it like this way? I don't know. Maybe it's me. It's, you know what? When I wear my glasses, everything looks like it's distorted. And uh, a cable puller or these are great. Klein made these. They come in different sizes. Uh, this is a smaller one. I usually have the bigger ones. Let me show you the bigger one. Here's the bigger one. You see the difference in size here? You know, this one's made for like, I guess, a minimum of uh, probably three eighths inch cable to half inch, something like that. You can see, and it's uh, they're made to stretch cables, or but they, you can use them for a lot of things, pulling rope, things like that. You know, it's got it's uh, kind of knurled in there. You put your line in, and you could pull it with without uh, taking the line off of a one side. Another three dollar piece. So let's figure out which one we want to do today. I'd like to get this hammer done because uh, when I put that challenge out, uh, James or Jim 
a hand tool restoration from uh, across the pond. He knocked the one out that night. He went down the shop, took one of his hammers, cut off the handle, and he made a short handle hammer. But uh, we'll talk more about that when I do that. And, uh, and I like I like to get this knife done because I'm afraid I'm going to cut myself anyway and get. So let's let's see what we're going to do. Today. Okay, I'm looking to see what I feel like doing. I want to do this knife for some reason. And and first thing I want to do is I, I want to customize it a little bit because, like I said, it's it's a you know it's a two dollar knife and it's just. Something that uh, is a good shop knife or knock around knife cutting into uh, whatever or a plant <laughs> Now the thing is that uh, What here you when you have a wooden handle you don't want to uh, put this in water or anything because then it could address swelling and stuff So whenever you're trying to clean something like this you want to, if you're going to clean it a good thing is a mineral spirits or alcohol something like that that'll dry off quickly and then you can take it to the sander and we'll hit this on the wire brush and see, you know, if we can get some of this off. I feel a little burr here, so it was probably abused, but let's see what it looks like after the wire brush. Okay, first we're going to spray it down. We have some 90% alcohol. <clears throat> we're going to spray the whole knife down. We have been a couple times. Spray it down. Uh, give it a good dousing of alcohol. Wipe it off. You know, <laughs> if you do cut yourself, you have less of a chance of losing that finger. <laughs> When you do it like this, but you know right now we'll and try and wipe off some of the hand grease and things like that around here And uh, I feel much better and now working on it taking it to the uh, the wire brush and things like that knowing that at least it's been alcohol cleaned Okay, here's our post wire brush evaluation take a look at the blade see the staining It's got some pitting and, and of course the damage on the bottom. We're going to take it over to the uh the belt sander now and try and address the blade and uh, we'll get to the handle later on take a look at the handle what it looks like and then we'll reprofile it Okay, we have about an hour into the knife here, and uh, you can see what we did with the handle here. We took all that grime off, reprofiled the back to make it a little, no sharp edges, because when you hold this in your hand, you don't want that sharp edge jabbing you. And uh, you can see what we did here. Again, not a mirror finish, but uh, presentable, and you know we didn't sharpen it yet, but we got all the all the crap off the blade, you know, all the pits and everything. One little one up here I couldn't really get to, but and smoothed out the back of the blade. Everything's looking good. Uh, I'm going to finish the handle here, you know, like we do. Maybe some gun stock, maybe some uh, shellac, you know, make it nice. And then uh, we'll sharpen it up and see how it does. It's a, it's a nice knife, right? Okay, next up we got this ball peen hammer. And this one has a long hand. I mean, this one here is is uh, almost 13 and a half inches long. I don't know. What does anybody use a ball peen hammer with this long of a handle and you know the whole idea most of the ball peens that we use making gaskets things like that and you know i've had bigger hammers then you start getting into the sledges and i don't understand like does anybody actually use a big you know anybody out there use a big handle ball peen for i don't know what would you use something that long for you know uh, um, unless you're need some extended reach or something anyway we're going to try and do this and it seems that the sweet spot for my short handled hammers seems to be about seven inches which is almost half this handle so we're going to try that and again i don't want a sharp edge at the bottom so i'll leave a little bit longer so we can curve it around and uh we'll see what we can do okay, let's do that i think that had to be the longest i ever cut off of a handle but uh we'll see and this is a, a slightly heavy this ain't like a a 12 ouncer this this is more like a I don't know. I'm going to have to weigh it, but it's definitely not a lightweight ball peen. But uh, like I said, I'm going to curve off the handle. We'll scrape it down now. We'll finish the head and see what it looks like in a minute. Alrighty, this is looking pretty nice, huh? Now remember, this is going to be my everyday beater, so you know I'm not going to go nuts on it. But you know, did the head up like we like to do? Uh, the, the handle was nice and tight. Um, didn't even hit it with any polish or anything yet. Face is all good, but we'll we'll straighten that out. But now what we want to do 
again, this is important. If you're going to cut the handle off, you got to round off the bottom because a lot of times you're going to grip down here and you don't want this digging into your palm. So that's imperative that you uh, round off the bottom, which, which we did here. It doesn't look so awkward now when you, <laughs> when you do that. But uh, now we're going to do a little uh, paint, a little stain on the handle and see what it looks like. Well, you know my favorite part, remember what this $3 hammer and $2 knife looked like before we started. And we're calling this project done. Uh, this is a nice midweek project. Um, first, let's talk about this Forster Brothers knife. You know, I didn't even know anything about these knives. I went on eBay and these things run for good money. Actually, uh, the cheapest I saw was uh, $50 for used ones. But you can see what we did here. We just took it down, got everything nice and clean. Didn't go crazy on here. Did a preliminary sharpening, just a preliminary sharpening on here, and you could see it it uh, it cuts really nice, doesn't it? So uh, yeah, we did just like I said. This is a good steel, and apparently they go for a lot of money. And uh, so Forster Brothers, this is their uh, thick deboning knife. Um, the blade is uh, all the pits are taken out, all the staining. So this one could go back in service. This is a nice knife. Uh, next up, obviously, we did the uh, hammer challenge. Let's talk about that for a minute. Now, I have a funny story. Uh, you know, when I first went to Jacktown, uh, the guy that told me about Jacktown, he was there selling stuff, and he, he had a bag of hammers. And I said, what do you want for your hammers? And they were all ball peens, usually larger ones like this one, but, you know, all different sizes and shapes. And I said, how much you want for your hammers? He goes, I get like a buck each, you know. So I, I bought the whole bag. So I was walking around Jacktown with a whole... Um, a burlap bag full of hammers. It must have been about 30 of them in there. And so I have a ton of hammers just laying around. But this one here, you know, if I'm telling you when I asked you about that challenge and uh, that challenge really is something you should try because I know a lot of people out there go, why would I cut the handle when I could just choke up on the handle? It's not the same as anybody will tell you that has a short handled hammer. For some reason you reach, if you're going to do any peening over or anything where you, you know, uh, of course we all choke up on the hammer, but that back end of the hammer doesn't allow your hand to sit the way it should. Your hand should sit like this. And it seems that seven inches or set between seven and eight seems to be the sweet spot. I like seven. And, uh, and again, you're going to come down here and it'll give you all kinds of uh, work. But here you can see what we did here on this one. We just had some fun with this. I don't usually polish the face on here but <laughs> but look at that i don't usually polish the face but it was just so messed up and i said ah, what the heck um everything came out real nice on here this like i said was hard now over here we we just use uh, uh first i started with linseed or uh lemon oil to get it soaked in then i use uh, linseed oil on here i'll just keep coating that with linseed oil but we did it in Scalcraft or Red just so it's easy to find. But uh, nice little hammer, right? It doesn't look... You know, it's funny. When you look at it this way, it looks almost like that's the way the hammer was supposed to be. You wouldn't think that we took off this much of a handle. But anyway, that's today's project. We have the uh, we have the nice short-handled challenge ball-peen hammer. I don't have a uh, ball-peen short. I didn't until now. And we have the nice Forster Brothers knife. So... Uh, Thanks very much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this one. This was okay, a lot like of fun. I said, thanks very much for tuning in. I uh, hope you do get that short hammer challenge. A lot of guys out there are doing it. They're having a lot of fun. And uh, take care. We'll see you on Friday. Bye-bye.